So this is all your own private collection, all of this stuff? Yes, it is. How long has it taken you to accumulate all of this? Uh, a lifetime. Uh, so I've been in it since, uh, well, since I left school. Um, I used to work with Philips on the uh, design of their uh, first uh, VCR, consumer VCR, mm. and uh, worked up through various uh, helical scan VTRs, which were my speciality, and they were sort of really challenging in the early days. Early technology was, uh, was a dog. <laughs> <laughs> all of this, actually, all of this is... Uh, each item is cutting edge at, of its day, and it was just challenging the technology, challenging the technology. And um, some things were ready and some were Like, for example, here, I got a, yep. here I've got a Newton, right? And this was the forerunner of the iPad. Um, now, they, for, Apple stuck with this. The, the data entry was via um, text. Yeah. And it, I mean, there's even jokes in The Simpsons where it doesn't quite um, match up. Uh, you know, you're writing one thing and it's something else comes out. But this was a forerunner and, and, and it was expensive and almost useless to use in the real world, you know. But um, they stuck with it and they came out with the iPad second generation when the technology was ready. This is an Australian product, Australian made. You said you're based in Canberra. Yes. Is that right? Yes. I, I design, I build, I hire, as in wet hire, with myself as an operator, and I operate. So, I um, I'm also the operator as well as the designer. So I know it works. So I'm continually refining the design. So, what kinds of projects have hired this up to date? Well, uh, television stations, uh, mainly owner operators. They're the best people to have it because. They're not particularly fiddly, but you need to have someone who looks after the gear. It's lightweight. It's it's ease of setup, ease of transport. Like I carry this everywhere in my Falcon wagon. It'll go in a Commodore wagon too. I don't don't mind if it's holding a Ford. <laughs> um, but it, it's modular. You can set it up at two meters, four meters, six meters, eight meters, or ten meters. And it doesn't really matter what kind of camera. It'll take any kind of weight camera. It's predominantly set up for. ENG style video cameras, but you can put film cameras on there or red. I, I, did this, I mentioned this feature I shot earlier on. We had a red camera on there. The rig weight was 18 kilograms with, with lens, hard drive, battery, all this sort of stuff. You can put digital SLRs on there. They're wonderful, you know, nice little package. Anything. You can put your little HD recorder there on there. machines here they're all struggling with the technology of the day I mean and they were hugely expensive this is a domestic machine here a quarter inch um, open reel machine uh, it was targeted at the domestic market this one's the monochrome version and um, this is an ad from Playboy here and for in 1971 for US um, $1,300 you could get the VTR and when you got the VTR you would get um, one of the um, bunny girls would come um, and uh, with you for the weekend. And pose for you. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what uh, you know if you were struggling to find a need to use. Did the camera this. come with it, or was just the, just the VTR? Well, I, I think it was. I think it must have been the whole package because you couldn't have really done anything with it without the camera. The GYHMZ1, it's a new camera and what it features is 24p recording as well as a, a separate audio configuration which is different to the consumer 3D camcorder. So a proper audio input, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is a prototype, it's not released as yet? Uh, correct, yeah. yeah. So we, another couple of months okay. we'll have to stop, yeah. So you're considering this to be a professional camera despite the size? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mainly because it does 24p and you have the more advanced audio inputs. So this is a 3D one-piece camcorder, tiny little handheld device. It's called the HXR NX 3D One P. It's quite a uh, quite a mouthful, but basically it's got twin lenses, 
with a 31 mil, uh, millimeter um, interaxial distance. Um, and what's really quite interesting is that this LCD, there is no viewfinder as such, it simply uses this LCD panel on the side, which uh, is actually a um, uh, glassless 3, 3D panel. So you get you know very capable 2D camera with, with a 10 times zoom lens, with uh, optical, yes. uh, should say active, active steady shot for image stabilisation. So even if you're just shooting regular, mm. regular material, not in 3D, it's a very capable yes, camera. Very it's got a large amount of memory on board, 96 gigabytes of onboard very memory. Well. It's about six hours of continuous shooting in 2D, um, as well as card slots for memory stick and, and SD cards for removable storage. But stepping up from that, you've got this one here as well now. Yeah, this is, this is going to be out a little bit later in the year. This is our first one-piece shoulder mount. Uh, 3D camera. Um, this is based very much on our XD Cam EX series of, of established shoulder mount uh, cameras but with the twin lens design. Some of the, the beauties of this camera is it um, with an interaxial distance of 45 millimetres it can be focused relatively close and a number of the one piece 3D cameras that have been out there haven't allowed you to focus very close so that the, the closest your subject could get to the camera was maybe a couple of metres yeah. and this actually allows you to focus down quite a deal closer which makes it more usable basically. The other thing that's quite interesting is this quite unique um, um, concentric knob on the side of the lens which has a series of controls for iris, zoom, and also auto convergence and focus. So it's all in one place for the operator to use. It's really an operator's dream, I think, to have all those controls yeah, so it's on a concentric like a control. Type thing. Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got iris is actually down here, but you've got focus and zoom there as well as convergence yes. adjustment all at your fingertips. Um, it records to memory cards, to um, two pairs of S by S memory cards. Yeah. So you can actually do continuous recording and virtually hot swap and continue recording because you're only using one pair at a time. Um, and that'll be out round about November and there's certainly a lot of documentary makers out there that are uh, quite keen to get their hands on this one. Um, the other application for it is, is as a live camera because um, uh, apart from standalone use as a documentary type camera, it has a pair of HDSDI outputs yeah. on the back. So for live event production and television coverage and whatever in 3D, we can see this having applications as a, a sideline camera, as an interview camera, as a stand-ups camera. This one also um, intrigues me, the waterproof one. This is the new model, is it? Yeah, this is this one's already on sale. This is called the... Uh, it's another member of the um, NX Cam family. It's uh, called the HXR NX70P just started shipping out into the stores actually this week right. um, and it's it's the world's first water resistant and dust resistant camera at this sort of class $3,200 list price so this is our entry level in, in our NX cam family it's a very capable camera a good, a good lens full HD full 10 a 1920 by 1080 um, a, a good lens a really good zoom lens on it um, and as you can see not necessarily designed for diving. You would want to put it in a housing if you're going to submerge it. I mean, we're not classifying so this what as submerging. Sort of classified? Well, it's not classified to any depth because it's not designed for submerging. It's designed to have, you know, rain falling on it as it does here in this tank. Um, it would make it ideal for documentaries out in you know, really desolate places. Documentaries, yeah. journalists out in the field. It's a very small camera. Yeah. Um, so for documentarians, for people going into difficult conditions where maybe a, a larger camera is going to attract too much attention. Uh, it's ideally suited to that kind of application. Um, it doesn't have it fitted to it, but it comes with a uh, an audio bridge as well, which is not waterproof, uh, which is why it isn't on there. But again, giving you a pair of XLR inputs and phantom powering and all the audio facilities that you'd expect. So and that's AVCHD? That's AVCHD as well. Um, yeah, up to 24 megabits. In fact, up to 28 megabits per second. It will actually shoot uh, up, to, up to 50p format. Video. 50p? Yeah, up to 50p. So At 1080? Yeah. Okay, terrific. Very capable. Tricast is basically a portable production studio. 
So you've got your eight channels in of uh, audio and video. Uh, you've got a DDR, you've got two DDRs in here, which are basically uh, digital VCRs. Here we are here. You've got stills, uh, you've got title facilities, and you've also got your virtual sets, which is what we're looking at here. Basically, we've got a, um, a three camera green, uh, green screen shoot here, and we're, we're able to do a live key at the click of a button. So basically just sampling the green area here. And from there, we're able to incorporate the talent into a virtual set. So you've got multiple video streams and audio streams coming in. Yes. You can record the video on the fly. Yes. You can stream it out to the web on the fly. You can indeed. That's pretty simple as well. So TriCustom basically means there's, there's three ways to output. So it's either a live out through the video out, um, you can stream to the internet, or you can record the video as well. Right. So hence the name, TriCustom. So who do you see as the major market for this? Um, look, you know, there's a lot of markets out there for, you know, every, everyone from corporate videos through to, um, you know, churches, media events, that kind of thing. It's all very popular. And also, you know, the IPTV-based um, companies who are just starting to start up now and they're the broadcasting to the web yeah. rather than out to um, through traditional TV. Eight live, live streams. Yeah. You can also have uh, two network streams as well. So, and the other feature, which is new for the extreme, is the ability to use your um, iPad or iPhone and stream directly using AirPlay across to the device, and you can mix that into the program as well. Part of the reason for showing all of this uh, and bringing it out of my garage is basically all this equipment holds people's stories. People's stories are locked up in all these formats. I mean, these are just a few of the formats that we've had through time. You know, each one of these is different tape formats and they, they change as the technology evolves. But then we record our family's history, we record our stories, our, our country's history history and then the technology moves on it gets disposed of and all of our stories are locked in here mm. never to to, to 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 be found again so this is a completely separate part to the existing steady cam right it, it has to there's a little bit of a change to uh, the gimbal on the master side and they're now all the sleds and all the zephyrs come what we call tango ready and the new Archer 2s are all Tango ready now, but we had to make a little change to it, just okay. the hips over So how, how do you see this is different to a jib or a crane uh, existing? It's mobile, one, it's mobile, two, it has the subtlety and the human feedback of a, a, of a Steadicam. We haven't lost anything that a regular Steadicam has, so all, all the cool stuff Steadicam does, we still can do with this. What's the maximum weight of the camera that you can put on this thing? The weight that we recommend. Okay, there's right. a difference. What's the recommended weight that you put on this? About, about six pounds. Okay, which is uh, three kilos. Three, yeah, or a little less than three kilos. Yep, yeah, around three kilos. If you shorten it, you can put more on. If you lengthen it, uh, yeah. that's about what you should have on. There. Okay. Then. If it's very much like operating a regular Steadicam. When we when we teach a Steadicam course, we have people on day one who've never had a Steadicam on before, and on day three we have them operating this thing. Mm. Same Steadicam arm, it's the same vest, same everything. It's just you put a dummy weight up here instead of a camera. Yep. And you have a little taking camera at the other end. So here we go. So basically we're down on the deck. Right. So we have, we can go really slowly. Poke into things. And you have, because I can move my feet, you've got tremendous subtlety in how all this works. I know I'm fooling around, but, but the cool thing is I can also do just little, slow, simple things. 
you know, without any. Then, you know, just like a really good crane, it automatically back pans. So if I don't pan the master end, this thing stays aimed in the same direction. So you sweep over things. So you sweep over tables and stuff like that. This is what a steady cam cannot do. Go over people's heads. You know, regular steady cam cannot pull that trick. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes it fun. It, to me, it's like I've been doing this 30 years now almost. God help me. And uh, this is just fun. 